occasion on which we have gathered together at this memorial, primarily to acknowledge the landing at Gallipoli on the 25th of April 1915 of Australian and New Zealand forces. However, the additional plaques on the memorial bear mute evidence that on this day we also remember and pay tribute to the Australian forces who have seen action on many other occasions. Apart from 1997, when I visited Gallipoli, it has been my privilege to be in attendance on every other occasion since 1951. Because of the passage of the years, I feel sure that the majority of you who join us each year are unaware of the circumstances relative to the establishment of this memorial. As one of the very few survivors of that era, it is my pleasure today to share with you how a dream became a reality. Over 92 years ago, I was born a couple of streets away in a then vastly different Dutton Park. It was, of course, mainly the era of the horse, with a limited number of motor cars to be seen. Would it surprise you to learn that at 1 p.m. every Saturday, people then worked five and a half days a week, 100 horses from Webster's Bakery, which was only a block away from here, would thunder down Gladstone Road, into the, round the cemetery corner, into Fairfield Road, and then down to the resting paddocks near the river. Today, that area is established with luxury homes. At 5 p.m. on the Sunday, the reverse would occur, and the horses would return to their stables by the same route. In 1948, a few of us formed the Dutton Park sub-branch of the RSL, and the Brisbane City Council agreed to us meeting on a monthly basis in the old Scouts Hall in Dutton Park. With an initial membership of 55, we met there until 1964. The membership continued to build and was mainly composed of World War II reverends and a smattering from World War I. It was the desire of the sub-branch to construct a war memorial somewhere in the Dutton Park area. In those days, this site was an absolute wilderness with a mixture of trees, shrubs, weeds and a huge rubbish dump. With the willing support of the local member Vince Gare, who was at that time the Premier of Queensland, and the cooperation of the Brisbane City Council, we were granted the use of this area as a site for our memorial and we named it Gare Park. Over the next few years, we undertook a fundraising campaign. At the same time, one of our members, an architect named Brian Brunelli, undertook the design of a suitable memorial. Brian is also a survivor, is aged 95 and still lives on the Sunshine Coast. As our plans came to fruition, it was our wish for the memorial, which ultimately cost five hundred and fifty one pound nine shillings and eleven pence to be completed for an official opening and dedication on Anzac Day 1951 who although at stonemason was employed early in 1951 who although a good tradesman proved to be an alcoholic this became a major problem and progress of course was most unsatisfactory we terminated his services on the 21st of April and a couple of stonemasons from the City Council took over. All arrangements for the official opening had been finalised so it had to be presentable. With after hours volunteer help from a number of us, it reached a height of eight feet. It was temporarily capped and the relative plaques attached by 2.30am on the morning of Anzac Day. The official opening was by the Governor Sir John Laverack in the presence of a Guard of Honour from the Queensland University Regiment. The Brisbane City Council did a magnificent job preparing gardens and planting appropriate trees and has ever since undertaken the maintenance of the park. Over the years it has redesigned 
and beautify the area. In those days, the official march commenced at Highgate Hill. The march was led by my father, Lieutenant Colonel H. V. Taylor, who was a veteran of both world wars, and we marched for many years behind the Brisbane Excelsior Band. Dad left the march, led the march every year until his death in 1977. The original march, of course, was quite long, but most of us were still in our 20s and pretty fit. But ultimately, as age took its toll, the march changed to the shorter route which we use today. In 1964, the council decided to demolish the old hall in Dutton Park, which heralded the demise of the Dutton Park sub-branch. However, a marriage of convenience was arranged by a merger with the Oronga sub-branch, and as a consequence of that marriage, the Oronga Dutton Park sub-branch was born and is now your host each year. Anzac Day is an occasion where we especially remember those of our comrades who did not return. Obviously, our memories are of young men, and because of this, the words of the ode are so poignant and true when they say, they shall grow not old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. <laughs>